The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmet will be the one ruler of the Romans. Everybody pay bills. There's no one exempt of paying bills. We all pay bills because that is a picture of the last day in all nations. Everyone will have to pay Bilal, who is a type and shadow of the Mahdi. In the judgment on the nation of Islam for ignoring Bilal, particularly those that are in Arabia. The judgment is the Muslims don't really know the Bible. And this is the disregard they have for Bilal being played out. Now I'm going to show you just how slow we are in the Bible. Our nation has no teachers. And today I'm praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the teaching anointing. First of all, I would love to say, there's no God but Allah. There's no other deity worthy of worship but Him. I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Now, going on, we want to go to Genesis 24 and 1. And the thing about the Prophet Muhammad is many people don't understand him. They don't understand his role. This is the reason why many of our brothers in the Israelite camps won't come to Islam because of the prophecies that are in the Bible about Ishmael and about the bondwoman and her seed being cast out. A lot of our brothers do not know how to connect the Quran with the Bible, but this is my job. This is the task Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. And all praises is due to him. Genesis 24. And Abraham was old and was well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had put I pray thee thy hand under my thigh and I will make thee swear by the Lord the God of heaven and the God of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son the family of the Canaanites among whom I dwell the prophet Mohammed was not the heir he was a servant. His task was to keep God's people, particularly the family of Abraham, from Christianity. Simply put, the prophet Muhammad was nothing more than a messenger of Allah and a servant. He was not the heir. The real heir was Abraham. In this context, now let's go on in verse 4. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So Isaac is the heir. For the scriptures say that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. God promised to make the nation of Ishmael a great nation. But his promise was solely with Isaac. And so right now, the Arabians are making Islam theirs. They are refusing to return the religion back to the air. And the air is the Mahdi. And I'm going to show you. Let's keep going in verse 10. And the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia 
unto the city of Nahar. So you can see this is a picture of the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. All of the goods of his master was entrusted with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted the prophet Muhammad with the best religion. The best religion on the planet. And this is all because God wanted to keep the family of Abraham away from Christianity. And so now you got this understanding that you never had. And I'll continue to go on and I'll elaborate. So now the covenant is with Isaac. So that means that the Quran, the religion of Islam, belongs to who? The nation of Israel. That's right. And so that's why the prophet Muhammad never said that he was the Messiah. He told you that the prophet Isa was the Messiah in Islam. So then what happened to the prophet Isa? All because of him being caught up in Christianity's lie, he has to die. And now he has to pass that mantle on to the Mahdi, unto whom's right it belongs anyway. Because Isaac was blind, okay, and he was deceived. Just like the prophet Isa, he was deceived. If you go to the Hebrew scriptures, if you go to the book of Joshua, Joshua was deceived. He was deceived by the people of Gibeon, by the people of where? Palestine. And they tricked him and said that they came from a far country. But really they was next door. And so Joshua, without seeking God, he made an oath. And his oath was that they would be safe. And what happened? The truth came out. And so Joshua had to accept these people, but he made them servants. Okay, that's the real truth. And so therefore, by Isaac being blind, he pronounced a blessing on his so-called eldest son. But Esau, he was into the flesh, okay, that is going into the nation of Israel. Edom. So who crept up and snatched the blessing? The nation of Israel. Okay. Jacob was there. And Jacob is a picture of the Mahdi. You see, the Mahdi is seen in Jacob. And the Mahdi really is called Jacob. As you can see, I'm smooth skinned. Okay. I am called a son because I look like a son. I'm 42 years old and I really don't even, I don't even have a beard, okay? I am called a son because I'm a son of wisdom, okay? Wisdom has been my mama and I'm called the son through the scriptures. If you go to the book of Psalms, it says, kiss the son, lest he be angry with you. That's not talking about the prophet Isa. The prophet Isa spoke in parables, and many times he would talk about the son, the son, the son, and he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about the Mahdi, particularly when he said that all judgment will be placed in the hand of the son, because we know according to the Hadiths, the Mahdi is going to be the man that is going to completely fill this earth with equity. Just like it was filled with garbage. I have been given the task to clean up the world. And this is something that has not just popped up. Okay, years ago, I made a song talking about I never thought I would help you save the world. The songs that I'm singing about having an Arab army. This stuff is years ago. This is how on point prophecy is and when Allah told me I was the Mahdi that's when I just woke up that's why if you listen to me you'll notice that it changed okay it's because time is going by and when the Mahdi appears it's because we're getting close to the end Allah woke me up 
and told me the truth. And now my message is changing and it's more prophetic and the insight is more spot on. OK, I'm making this stuff simple for a child to get. Now, going back to 24 and verse 10 of Genesis, you can see that this servant took 10 camels. Now, you know, the prophet Muhammad was associated with camels. This servant is a picture of the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. He was a good steward and that religion was not his he was told he was not a supervisor. He was told he was not the father. He also was told that he is not a poet as people assumed. All those roles belong to the Mahdi. And I'm here. here, here, here and here, here, in First Samuel 5 and 1. Let's get that real quick. And I'll go over the meaning of Philistine and Palestine shortly but a philistine is really going into a palestinian or a person of palestine and the philistines took the ark of god and brought it from ebenezer unto ashdod but the hand of the lord was heavy upon them right now the hand of the lord is heavy upon them and their scholars are lost in the sauce they talking about Allah's help is near but they're hiding a black man in their hay deeps and Allah is swift in reckoning they don't have any idea that their hands are full of blood you see before when I loved the Arabs and did not have any clue of what was really going on, I supported them. OK, and I was against Netanyahu. But now, after getting into the Bible, after getting into contact with the Most High, I'm seeing that he was spot on. Israel is punishing them for stealing. OK, they stole the ark. They were supposed to pass it on. Now, I know they don't know I'm here. OK, I can't say they don't know I'm here, but I can judge them because they say that they are in contact with the most high praying five times a day. All these scholars and you cannot break and crack the code just like I did. OK, I just decoded the hey D right here. OK, they could have did the same thing and found out that the Mahdi is black. OK, they didn't do that. They're not going to do that. They want to keep that ark, that ark that is stolen. Now, let's keep going. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod and he destroyed them and smote them with the emeroids even Ashdod in the coast thereof. Now let's go to verse 11. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, send away the ark of God of Israel and let it go again to his own place. See, it has to go back to the rightful owner. You Philistines, you Palestinians, you Arabs, you have to return the ark. It has to come back to the Mahdi. That's why your hate thieves tell you that there's coming one man who's going to be the ruler of the Arab. So watch this part. Let it go again to his own place that it slay us not and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. Sounds like Gaza, huh? This sounds perfectly, perfectly describing what happened in Gaza. God's hand is upon them because I told you there's a black man hiding in their Hades. Now, I didn't even study this. I'm just working and God is just throwing these scriptures at me and my eyes got real big because I was like, whoa. So the Philistines took the ark and when they took the ark, God's hand was against them. So now they have to send it away. But watch this. 
Send away the ark of the God of Israel. Let it go again to its own place, that it slay us not and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men that died not were smitten with the emeroids. And the cry of the city went up into heaven. So they had to send the ark away. But they couldn't send it away empty. Okay. You're going to have to pay the bill. You're going to have to pay the bill. Okay. Now the prophet Esau, peace be upon him. When he comes back, he's destroying the cross. That's going into Christianity. He's helping me do my work. My brother is on the way. Okay. He helping me do my work. And then what he's going to do? Kill the pig. That's a metaphor. That's going into his clothes, being stained with the blood of Edom. Okay, so we're going to get the Romans. And then after that, what's going to happen? He's going to destroy and get rid, abolish the Jizya tax. Okay, we ain't paying taxes no more. All of y'all is going to pay taxes to us. And the Arabians is going to pay taxes and they're going to pay up. All my sermons, everything that I'm teaching worldwide, okay? They're going to supply all of my need, okay? All the messages that I'm going to do with live coverage, all that stuff is going to be sponsored via a rap, okay? And I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. Now, you understand from this scripture that the Philistines took the ark. And when they took the ark, what happened? They tried to hide it and it kept knocking down their God. Okay. The Arabians always had this issue with other gods. Okay. And idols. They dealt with polytheism. Okay. And right now they're idolizing their prophet Muhammad, if they hear this message and then give a deaf ear to it, okay? That's what happens. They go into idolatry because they reject the Mahdi, and the Mahdi is whom the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave the kingdom back to. This is the reason why he split the moon, okay? The symbol of Islam is the moon. He split the moon with the black people. He was cool with black people. Also, I want to help you with something else. I want to help you with the curse that fell upon the Philistines. Inside of Philistines is the root word Palestine. The Philistines were a people from the Old Testament who lived in the region of present day Gaza and occupied territory between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. So the name Palestine comes from Philistines. And if you've studied your Bible, you'll know that the real Israel was always enemies with the Philistines. And right now, this is the reason why the black and the brown don't get along, my friend. The nation of Islam here in America the FOI, the black Islam nation, does not get along with the brown Islam nation all over the world. And it's all because the prophet Muhammad split the moon. And that signified that the religion of Islam would be split in two because it didn't belong to the prophet Muhammad. He was a servant. He was entrusted with the task of keeping the family of Abraham from Christianity. After that, that religion goes back to the owner. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me that Islam was my religion. He told me that that was my book. And when I read the Quran for 10 seconds, I get hit with things that people have read it for years. Do not get right now. I'm in the book of the bees. Okay. Bzz, 
bees. And Allah is revealing to me that that's the reason why Cassius Clay, which is my last name, Muhammad Ali, how he was the greatest. This is going into how this man passed the great test. And I'm speaking of myself. Allah woke me up and showed me and told me that I was closest to Allah. And now I have the task of completely cleaning up this earth. And I give him all the praises. I give him all the honor. And the float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, is going into Lamentations chapter 5. In Lamentations chapter 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let it be known. That that is talking about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His name is in verse 16. They translated the word lovely, okay, into Muhammad. They translated the name Muhammadim into lovely. But if you go to chapter 1, the Mahdi is in chapter 1. And it reads, I am black but comely. O oh, you daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kadar. Now, Kadar means Arab. The tents of Kadar is under black ownership. As the tents of Kadar, as the curtains of Solomon, it's not talking about Solomon of the Old Testament. It's talking about the solo man. It's talking about the last Solomon. It's talking about the Mahdi. As the tents of Kadar, as the curtains of Solomon is going into the certain man who shot down the wolf in sheep clothing, as you can see in my logo. As the tents of Kadar, my brothers, my sisters, Islam is under black ownership. Okay? As the tents of Kadar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I'm black. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me and are angry with me. That is my brothers and my sisters, the Arabs. They can't stand me. They mad at me. You know why? Because I was left out in the sun too long. And I am the original heir of this vineyard. It belongs to me. That religion belongs to me. And so the prophet Muhammad, he kept it real in the eight deeps. He told you about the Mahdi. He told you that he is the ruler of the Arabs. He told you that he would pray for his people at the last day. He told you. And that wasn't talking about him. That was talking about the Adan. That is talking about Bilal. The same black man that woke you all up. That same man is the owner of this religion and that is a picture of me you see it started off with that electrifying voice to wake the people up and it's going to end with that same electrifying voice this is the reason why they brought out the trumpets in the nation of israel the trumpets is going into the adan and the real ramadan is going into the honor of law and there's coming a day when you guys are going to have to make an ultimate hodge and I'm not going to go into detail and tell you everything right now because I don't want to give out these secrets okay they're not for Satan when the time comes there's going to be an ultimate hodge now let's get back to where we was at so now we established the fact that the Philistines is really the Palestinians or the Arabs and they were arch enemies to the nation of Israel so let's deal with one story the first story we want to go to is we want to go to the story of David now this is going to hurt it's going to really hurt it's going to sting like a bee the roof as it says in the Quran, in the book of the beast, is caving in on the Arabians, okay? Let me tell you something. I'm going to go through the bees. I'm going to go through that chapter. And we're going to see who this book really belonged to. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
gives me this message, you're going to see that this book belongs to me. Every book I get in, I excel because I am Allah's messenger and I associate no partners with him. Now, let's keep going. Let's go to this story. It starts off in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I entitled this, David Killed the Palestinian. This is your messenger. The messenger of Allah, the prophet Muhammad, the good steward. Who knew how to borrow and who knew how to return. He is the one who killed this Palestinian Okay, watch this. He kills Palestine. Watch this. 1 Samuel 17, 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Now, my dad's name is Monty Brooks. Monty means mountain. Okay, now watch this. And put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine that's exactly what I'm doing when I'm meeting up with these Arabs I'm going straight at them because I know Allah's got my back watch this and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him you see these Arabians, they have these imams and they hide behind their own little imams. This is the reason why in the war with Israel, they was using their own people as shields. And that's exactly what they doing. Instead of going to the real messenger right here, they are continually going to their own people who don't know anything who hasn't been called there's no prophets in arabian culture or even background there was only one prophet the prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him who was entrusted with the quran now this is the reason why they hide behind their own people because they don't want to give up that religion to someone else to be the ruler of of it. They got so much pride. They don't want to have to tell their wife that they under black ownership. No. They don't want to do that. This is the reason why they running into towers. They run into a tower. Them running into a tower is a picture of how they are going to die. All because of the man they've been hiding on the roof. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me that they're hiding a black man in the Hadith. Now, let's keep going with these Philistines, man. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. That's a picture of me. I look like a youth. I'm 42 years old. They're looking at this boy. And they say, he ain't the baddie. He ain't the baddie. He ain't the baddie. <laughs> this, this little dude think he the baddie. This little dude think he the baddie. They don't even know me though. They don't know my name. They don't know none of the clear signs. It's because of their racial pride. They're automatically assuming he's not the baddie. They're being just like Goliath with the Hadith. See, Goliath, Hadith, I told you. Allah is my teacher. Allah is my teacher. And let's keep going. So they mocking Daekwon when he comes to them in humility and says, you know what, brother? I'm the Mandy. They like, oh, you're not the Mandy. You're not the Mandy. So who the prophet, me or you? And that's why I say, what is the punishment for disrespecting the messenger of Allah. Because if the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was just a servant and the Quran wasn't his, it was borrowed. And now you talking crazy to the Mahdi. That's the reason why I turn my comments off. Verse 43. And the Philistines said unto David, am I a dog 
that thou comest to me with staves and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Now, if you look up pictures of Bilal, Rabba, okay, his real name is actually Bilal Abin Rabba. That's why the book is called The Bees. The man has three bees in his name. Right now, the Arabians are being stung by a swarm of killer bees because Allah is swift in reckoning. And the judgment has come. Okay? And we'll talk about that later. I don't want to hit you up. Okay? But the book of the bees is going into the roof, caving in on the Arabians. Now, let's keep going. And the Philistine said to David, come to me. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand, and I will smite you and take thine head from thee. Okay, that's going into your prophet. Okay, you're not going to be in the name of your prophet no more. All of you Arabians who have idolized the prophet Muhammad, your head is being cut off this day. You know why? Because the Rasulullah, how y'all pronounce it? The prophet of the Quran is here. And I'm taking your head from you. Why? Because I am the ruler of the Arabians. Okay, now let's keep going. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God where? In Israel. God has not forgot about Israel. Now, let's keep going. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. Now watch this. It's about to really get ugly. And it came to pass. When the Philistine arose. And came and drew nigh to meet David. That David hasted. And ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone. This is Monty. Okay. This is the prophet Mohammed. It just switched. Okay. That's why I love the Bible. The Bible is like a mountain. You can climb it from one side, get a view, climb it from another side, get a totally different view. Because David is a metaphor. Okay. I am named David as well. Okay, when I was in prison, I was called David. I had a bunkie that always called me King David. He said, David, okay, David is a mantle. David is a metaphor. Sometimes David is speaking about Mohammed. Sometimes David is speaking about Christ. Because remember, King Saul was chasing David all around trying to kill him. And that's exactly what Paul tried to do with the prophet Esau, the son of David. He was trying to kill him and they both were unsuccessful. So right now, the prophecy just switched. And I know they don't teach you that in Islam, but right now you're learning. And David put his hand in his bag and he took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in the forehead. And that's when I pull out my ID and I say, you know what? I'm Daquan Lamonti. And then my forehead, okay, is broad. And my nose is big. Okay, my dad name is Monty Brooks. <laughs> my dad name is Monty Brooks. Okay, and my dad is your prophet.
stop it, Dad. You Arabians didn't give birth to us. We gave birth to you. The black nation has always been here before you. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, has a dad. And his dad was my dad. We gave birth to you. You didn't give birth to us. Even your Quran confirms that God made Adam from the clay. He made him from the mud. We get it out the mud over here. He made him out of the mud. He made him out of the brown. Why? Because the black nation was here before you. And the black nation gave birth to all nations. So the prophet was right when he said he will be of my father's house. Now let's read that hadith for Goliath. Let's get that. This is going to be Sunan al Termidi 22 and 30. May Allah be pleased with him. Abdullah Abin Masood reported the messenger of Allah. Peace and blessings be upon him. Said the world will not pass away until the Arabs are ruled by a man from my household whose name agrees with my name. That makes sense because the Mahdi is the Muhammad. He is the clay. He is the rich homie Kwan. All those names agree with the prophet Muhammad's name. We gave him a name. We allow him to be Muhammad. Okay. What is your problem? Y'all lost. It's because your imams, your moms, you, you a mama's boy. You want to keep holding on to your imam instead of going to the Rasulu. Okay, this is going into the prophet's prophet. What is your problem? You don't want to receive your prophet's prophet? Wake up. Now let's go to book 31, number 42, 69, narrated by Abdullah. Now when I went to the mosque, that's what they called me. They called me Abdullah. He said, you need a name. I said, what? I know I'm people. I know I'm Daekwon. <laughs> okay, I know my name. He said, you're Abdullah. <laughs> and then when I told him, I'm a Mahdi, he, 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 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a joke, man. It's a joke. So who's rightly guided? Who's rightly guided? Me or you? Okay. You tell me. I don't want to keep going right there. The prophet of Allah. Peace be upon him, said, if only one day of this world remained, Allah would lengthen that day according to the version of Za'ada. Till he raised up in it a man who belongs to me or to my family. Now watch this. Whose father's name is the same as my father's. My dad's name is Monty Brooks. My name is Daquan Lamonti. Okay, so my dad is the Prophet Muhammad's dad. Why? Because we gave birth to you. You didn't give birth to us. Okay, don't make me go all the way back because the original Ishmael's was black. They was black. Okay, something happened. Okay, it's because you next door to Sierra is because Edom got to mixing around with you. And that's the real truth. And I'm not throwing salt on you. I'm not being disrespectful because the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, revealed to you in the Quran that Muhammad was a mercy to all of humanity. So everyone can come in. The doors is wide open as long as you are not associating Partners with Allah. And what's happening right now is that the Arabians are associating Muhammad with Allah. Because they won't let go to the old moldy bread. Okay. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He was ex-anointed. Used to be. But David, the Magdi, he is Freshly anointed. Okay. Now going on. I want to go to the other one. Let's let's keep reading that. Okay. Allah will lengthen that day. According to the version of Za'adah. Till he raised up in it. 
a man who belongs to me or to my family whose father's name is the same as my father's who will fill the earth with equity and justice. So this man is going to be used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to completely clean of the world. This will be the greatest thing any man has done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not bragging, I'm humble. I'm still working right now. I'm washing dishes, okay, on the side. My full-time job, I'm cutting grass. Okay, I'm still working. I don't tell nobody nothing at work. Nope. Nope. Okay, I am the son that is hidden. <laughs> I'm hidden. People are going to be shocked and surprised because this is all real. Now, years ago, and it's all documented, I have a song where I was singing, I never thought I would help you save the world. And I'm always singing around the house. And my wife knows this. She probably used to think I was going crazy singing all these songs. <laughs> but I also would sing about an Arabian army. Okay. And I seen clips of it sometimes while I'm doing this message. And I had no knowledge of any of the stuff I'm telling you. You want to know why? Because there is a prophet here. And that's the real truth. And I'm just giving you the real truth. Now, let's keep going. Now, Tupac said this. He said, some say the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. I say the darker the flesh, then the deeper the roots. I'm about to put my people on. Right now, I don't even really have no black support. None. None. Okay. I reach out to my family. I love my family. But as far as real black people that's financially supporting me and helping me and responding to my sermons i ain't got none of that okay i do have a little bit from my arabians okay and it's a few of them i don't know what's happening now <laughs> now that i didn't go on crazy but i'm still putting my people on because it's only right it's in the scripture okay islam was lent to the Arabians. It was not for them to keep. Okay, that mantle is coming back to Bilal. And them bees is buzzing. Bzzz. Okay, you, you better read the bees. I'm going to give you a heads up before I go into the Quran. And I break down the book entitled The Bees. Okay, I'm giving you a heads up. You, you might want to read that. It starts off with the judgment has come. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has some stern words for all of you who are conceited, who are racist, and who are being thieves, and who are associating Muhammad. Come on now. The Christians was guilty of associating Jesus with Allah. Now the Arabians... Because they refuse to accept their Mahdi. They are associating Muhammad with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lord, help us. Okay, help us. Going on. Sufan's version say, may Allah be pleased with them. The world will not pass away before the Arabs are ruled by a man one man just like moses just like mohammed just like mehmed the second mehmed the second was a type and shadow of the mahdi because he actually was the ruler of the romans and that's exactly what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing with me he's making me the ruler of the world okay and the nation of Islam had a chance. They was entrusted with the best religion. The religion of fighting. The Christian's religion is to turn the other cheek. And right now, Christianity is on top for some reason. So you know Allah had to regulate and say, give me my book back. Give me my book back. Okay, because y'all playing. Y'all playing. Okay, now I give honor where honor is due. I respect the Ottoman Empire. I, I, re, I do my history. 
I respect what the sultans have done. But something got twisted up in there. And now they're they're wearing dresses, okay? And ain't no time to be wearing dresses with all this homosexuality out here. Uh-uh. No, no, no. That stuff needs to be regulated. I'm here to revise. I'm here to be the law man. Monty, the word Lamonti means law man. And they were entrusted with the best religion who promises a reward for fighting in the cause of Allah. One of the greatest rewards. And here we are today with the nation of Edom. Okay, the white race, okay, on top still. Okay, something happened. So Allah is giving me the task to put all of the nations in subjection. Okay, now I want to end with this. I love my brothers. Okay, being a leader is not about being a lion. Okay, I try my best to balance being firm, but also having compassion. I love my brothers. I love the Arabians. I never in my mind would have ever thought these thoughts I'm thinking about the nation of Islam today. I never in my mind would ever have imagined anything about the Arabics but good. I love y'all. I still do. I had your flag as my profile picture. I love the Arabs. I was all about the Arabs. But when Allah comes in the room, okay, you can't pronounce good news on something that has no good news, you know, and and that's what it's all about. It's all about saying whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to say. And you can't help nobody. This is what I want to leave you with. You can't help nobody who is in trouble with God. If you are in trouble with God, there is nothing I can do for you. Okay? So, assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. Get these videos. Okay? I know this this channel is low traffic. But for those who are listening, Allah is witness. Okay? And the truth is going to come out. Okay, we're going to find out what y'all been doing. We're going to find out what y'all been doing. The Hades tell you to respond to the Matt D's sermons. Tells you to respond. Okay. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.